Welcome back everyone to your SQL Server tutorial series. I'm Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker, and we are going to be continuing our discussion on data integrity, specifically referential integrity. We've talked a lot about foreign keys and primary keys, and we haven't even got to the video devoted to them yet. <laughs> That's because they're so fundamentally important to designing a database. When we create a foreign key that references another column, we are creating what's known as a relationship. And another word for relationship is a reference. Think of a foreign key as referencing another column. That means referential integrity is something we need to consider whenever we create foreign keys. Now a foreign key has to reference a column that is unique. So this would include the primary key and any columns labeled unique. We will be discussing how to do all of that stuff in syntax when we get to that. But for now, just think of it conceptually. All that is saying is that every single row for a column has to have a unique value. That way, every single row is a specific entity. That goes back to the last video where we talked about entity integrity. That's a prerequisite to referential integrity. Now we can make foreign keys in our head and not actually code out saying, hey, this column references this column. In that case, we still have references. The only problem is we're not enforcing references in the database. So that means we have a table over here and a table over here, and this table references this table, but we're not allowed to draw the arrow. <laughs> it's divided from the parent, and you just have to assume or hope that all the data in here is correct, which the chances are it's not going to be if you're not using the right referential integrity rules, which we will discuss in just a moment. So for example, we might have an entity over here with the ID of 8, and we might reference that over here, and then this entity gets deleted. Well, guess what? This still exists, and when you look up 8 over here, nothing exists. Did 8 exist at one point, or did we just make up the number 8 on accident? What's going on here? And you're not able to go into the table structure and see that this column references this column or anything, because it doesn't. All you did was say, this column references this column in your head, but you never actually coded it out. That means you could throw a number in here, like 138, and 138 doesn't even exist in this table. Nothing is forcing this relationship. All you are is putting data in two tables and trying to make them match. Some people create entire databases without ever using foreign keys. I don't know how that's even possible, <laughs> but essentially in that case, you're just going off of the numbers and hoping that they match. It's like asking for something to go wrong in your database. When you're in that situation, you are sacrificing referential integrity. That's because you can't promise that this reference is actually referencing anything because there's no connection. Even if there does happen to be 138 here, there's no association. They're just two values in two different tables. And then you yourself associate them in your mind. But we don't want to do things in our minds because we're humans and we make dumb mistakes. Computers are more predictable. <laughs> so even though we can join these and basically create a generated table, the problem is they're not connected in any way in the database's eyes. So you can delete this, you can change this, it's all fine, it doesn't matter. This one is separate, it doesn't have any connection to that one. So how can you fix this? Well obviously you need to define a foreign key. When you define a foreign key, you are telling the database, hey, this references this, or this column references this column. And when you do that, it's telling the database, only to allow values that exist in the other table. So if I came in here and wrote 1337, but that didn't exist in this table over here, it'd be like, no noob, that doesn't work. It's gonna pwn you. So just creating a foreign key is one step to protecting your referential integrity. Now foreign keys have a couple of settings you can configure, and we'll get into those in detail when we talk about foreign keys. But essentially, we need to tell the database what happens when we delete the row that's being referenced, what happens when we update the primary key of the row that's being referenced? All of those kind of things we need to ask. We also have to consider things like, is the foreign key labeled not null? Is it unique? Making sure you have all of these constraints set up correctly are how you protect your referential integrity. And this is not a concept I can discuss entirely on a chalkboard. This is something we are going to have to code in SQL Server. This is more of an introduction so you understand the concept of what referential integrity is, so then when we start discussing all these things, it's not a slap in the face like, 
What? <laughs> Don't obsess over it. We will get into the details. So if you want to make sure you see those videos, be sure to click subscribe and you'll get notified, hopefully, <laughs> when I create new videos. If you like this video, be sure to click like. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and this should say not no. <laughs>